we're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign of what's going to happen to these other workers moving forward. Uh, China might hold uh, the secret as to the next big winners. Uh, we know that NEO, we do not own NEO, it's a battery swapping company, so instead of charging, they swap batteries. Um, that that is uh, going to, to win win the day. Uh, we think that Xpeng, which we do not own, but which is emulating Tesla might, we're seeing, uh, and we do own in our more specialized strategies, BYD was a, a, a battery manufacturer to begin with, and Warren Buffett owns, has owned for many years uh, a piece of BYD. That has done very well. We own that. Uh, and then uh, Geely, which bought Volvo, and and uh, I believe the chairman of Geely owns a position in Daimler. Uh, it is also due uh, with um, various companies, uh, including Baidu. So if I if I had to give you which of the Chinese names we have the highest conviction in, uh, it's probably Baidu, and that had been a hard sell for me because their search business was falling apart and it did seem to me with more than 150 or 200 electric vehicle manufacturers many being government subsidized that there would be a blood bloodbath and and baidu is uh, the government has deemed it the autonomous platform for china uh we weren't sure whether to believe that or not or if it would get caught up in the carnage but it does seem to be doing something uh, very interesting and there's also another company called AutoX. This is more, uh, this is, they're working with Dongfeng, Dongfeng, uh, uh, in, which is mostly involved in the trucking space. But we did take note that AutoX got, has gotten approval from California to go uh, fully autonomous there. I didn't know that until very recently. So that Welcome to the Crypto Teacher Stock Channel. And guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works. Because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that everything is planned out. Now, of course, guys, we go over the funny article first. Merck CEO stepping down. So it's the same routine. We just had Jeff Bezos, and now we have Ken Frazier. So, guys, we know something is brewing in the air, and we can see that in the yield rates. I'm going to leave a special video at the end. Do not miss it. Now, guys, we have Apple says they're going to be doing a car. Do I believe anything like that? No, but it looks like they're going to be doing a deal with Hyundai and Kia. But, guys, do you know how hard it is? To actually get a car in production, we see Tesla, but look how many cars they produce. About 700,000? Come on, guys. But they definitely can integrate their software in a car that's already out. But guys, I definitely do not believe that they're going to be doing a car. Just can't. But guys, we have Kwai Show, the Chinese short video company, similar to TikTok. But the fact is, the shares hit Hong Kong. And jump 200 percent, five point Vita, 5.3 billion dollars. So guys, make sure you're keeping an eye on that. Because in in Hong Kong, TikTok they ban that. Don't forget that. Now we have Nvidia says the 40 billion dollar deal with ARM takeover is still proceeds to plan. 
So basically, they still look like they're going to be going through with the actual deal. Now, getting over to some stocks, guys, we have Peloton quarterly sales at $1 billion, but shares fall. Now, of course, when we had the shutdown, Peloton was definitely a great stock to invest in. I'm not a fan of it because I definitely see, as like I said, spring and summer and going forward, us getting out and about. We see a whole lot of articles that are coming out, guys, saying, hey, we need these kids back in school. So it looks like the test is over. Whatever they were testing, guys, is over. They'll probably go back to it in about three to four years. But definitely they're trying to open this baby up as soon as possible. That's all you hear about is the stimulus package. And they're talking about changing the amount of money that you made per year in order to qualify for the stimulus. So at first it was about 75000 Now they dropped it down to 50000 But I think as long as you claim head of household, you may still qualify for it if you made 75000 or below. Now, we have Clorox, of course. Their long-term growth has exploded. We all know why, because of the C-word, but I definitely see this going down. After hours, though, because, of, of course, their earnings, their stock went up. But I definitely see this one retracting as things open up. But, of course, as long as they keep pushing the C-word, this stock will move up. But I definitely see it pulling back. We have Ford investing in electric and autonomous vehicles, $29 billion through 2025. And guys, we know what this is all about, the push for the fourth industrial revolution, Society 5.0, where, of course, autonomous cars, robots will be driving the cars, but not you. Also, the drones, we have testing of drones all over the place. I may do another video when it comes to that. And we had Snap beat expectations, but the actual stock falls. Snap is one of those social platforms that up in the air, it probably will get bought out sooner or later. Now, we also had Pinterest return strong revenue. And of course, their stock went up. Remember, that was one of our holiday stocks that it should have paid off for you as this earning reports because, guys, we knew it was going to go up because of the holidays. Now, don't forget the gambling stocks, guys, and we know cannabis. But Caesar is definitely a big pick. The fact is that Carl Icahn is heavily invested into it. When we get this pullback, and we will get one this quarter. Remember, I keep telling you, we're going to get a little pullback, about 10%. But the fact is that Caesar is not going anywhere. Just like I said, it, we're definitely going to be opening back up, guys. You can see the talk now is changing now. And the media, if you understand the Hegelian dialectic. But let's go over the actual indicators, guys. We have the dollar is moving up. Why is the dollar moving up when they printed so much money, guys? The dollar is moving up. We had the VIX down, of course, because the stock market hit all-time highs. Crypto market cap hit an all-time high. But, guys, when we know all-time highs, that's right. We have pullbacks. Now, of course, we had treasury yields up, and that's what I want to speak about at the end of this video. I'm going to leave you a video to listen to. It's very, very important for you to understand. Even though the Fed has an interest rate of zero, treasury yields are so important, and inflation, we're going to be, well, we're already over 2%, even though I always talk about 2%. If you go to your grocery store, inflation is definitely going to start hitting summertime towards the end of the year. That's why I said the big pullback will be towards the end of the year, without a shadow of a doubt. Remember in 2020, they print 20% of all currency in one year. So all the money that's in circulation right now, 20% of that they got printed in 2020. And they're not going to do that again this year, guys. It's definitely going to be a reckoning this year. So the perfect storm is definitely brewing. So yes, you may see the stock market all-time highs, and they want these young investors in there. They want them in there. And guys, please check out the video I did a few days ago. It's called Wall Street Bets and the New World Order Open the Door for Blockchain and Bitcoin. Please go check that out so therefore you can understand. They see your trades before you even make them, guys. Remember. This is all done by computers, nothing but algorithms. The technology, guys, is, that they have is just more superior than what we'll ever be able to have access to. But, guys, that's all I have for you. Don't forget to check out 
the crypto teacher channel very very important guys so you can learn the new economy blockchain like subscribe also this channel like subscribe spread it everywhere and enjoy the video at the end very important you have a wonderful day with Chris Murphy from Susquehanna yesterday who talked about the open interest in options and, and this is my personal opinion you know me long enough we're a team I'm a data guy I go by data but here's the first non-data comment I'll have in a while I think the idea that very small option traders are making all of this happen is like believing that you know somebody in a in a Viking helmet organized the capital riot I think that there is real money behind both sides of this trade and, and of course, it is affecting on both sides the small investor. But when everybody else is in chaos, I think the strength that I have is to sit back, have a little bit of perspective, and ultimately determine what really drives the market and the economy. And that's availability of money. And we have a historic level of availability of money. The time to get worried, as you know, because remember, Mel, the Doomsday, Dwyer Doomsday Clock from last fall, August 26th? when the yield curve inverted? Well, it's, it's the opposite now. You're coming out of the recession. You have an extraordinary amount of, of stimulus from fiscal, monetary, and interest expense savings. I'm so sorry, Tim was gonna jump in, but I think he's frozen, Tony. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and jump in. So, okay. I mean, I don't wanna force words into your mouth, but it almost sounds like Jerome Powell is at the heart of what is going on in the markets today, including what is going on with GameStop. A hundred, Mel, it's, it's extraordinary. The guy keeps looking into the camera. How many times have you and I been on set? I wish we were on set again. How many times has Jerome Powell looked into the camera, giving you the game plan, and geniuses like me trying to figure out if it's right or wrong? The guy told you what he's doing. He's whole, we're at 1.4% core PCE. The vice chair of the Fed, Clarita, said they wanted above 2% for a year. Now, I'm not a mathematician, but 1.4% is below 2%. Now, you got to get to 2% before you, you're there for a year. You've got an extraordinary amount. See, what people miss, Mel, is the, the stimulative effect of interest rate reduction. We talk about inflation. We talk about price power and, and you know all this money is going to print inflate. Yes, but interest expenses collapsed for the government, for corporations, and for households. Tony, a great. I wish I did see. I can't see it because I don't have a return, as they say, in the business. But my question is exactly that: the Fed wants inflation above two percent for a year, but embedded in that is the fact that they somehow think they can control it. Let's just play the what if game, and I'm a big believer that. You're going to get inflation in spades in the back half of this year. What if instead of around 2% for a year, it goes from 1.4 to, let's say, three and a quarter, three and a half in the course of six months? Then they're totally behind the eight ball, and that's not something the market is expecting. Well, Guy, I think that, that will, of course, create some indigestion if that happens. But honestly, I, I think inflation is going to pick up pretty dramatically. You're going to be, remember, inflation is a year over year number. So you're going to bring in the March, April, and May of 2020 numbers. So you're gonna have inflation from those price drops back then. But then after the summertime, you're gonna be anniversarying the big jump up in inflation that came with the stimulus June, July, and August. So again, I, I think settle back, you know, treat it and look at the, does it shut down money? The guy printing it keeps telling you he's not shutting it down. Pricing power for companies is a good thing. Right. That's why earnings surprise to the upside, I think. Tony, thanks so much. Good to see you.